Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we are starting part three of our four part series on the mocha main. Hope you enjoy. Today we're going to go over a little bit of pattern manipulation. Um, I'm going to end up having to reshoot, well, not reshoot, but I'm going to end up having to remake this billet. Uh, and I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, but this is the billet we were working on the other day. Um, out of all the coins, all the quarters. And uh, as you can see, it's coming together. I'm trying to get this angled here where you guys can actually see the pattern. There we go, there's a good shot of it. Um, what you can see going on here is everywhere you see one of those striations, uh, that was an edge, if you will, of one of them quarters. Um, as you can see, my, my stack of quarters slid a little bit on me um, at a diagonal whenever I was forging this down. So when I sanded this smooth, I revealed those patterns along that edge. Um, that may be what or what not you are wanting uh, out of your patterning. Uh, choice is yours on that. Um, but on the edges here, you can see some more of that patterning where the quarters. It's kind of hard to tell because there's so much light interference here. Um, try to get some of that taken out. Well, I can't do that anyways. There. There we go. You guys can see that there. Um, those are all the edges that have been compressed and squeezed together there. That's the stack of quarters as they sit. The reason why I'm going to have to probably redo this billet, um, for the customer and stuff. Well, one, this is just a test billet, um, you know, just doing with the quarters and stuff. I have all my customers' coins that I'm going to take and be putting into this project of making this Damascus split cross um, for this wedding. But the reason why I'll be redoing this billet mostly is because I let the forge get away from me. You see that big trough in there? A lot of, I, I call it letting the juice loose. Um, pretty much a lot of that nickel floated right out of the joint. It melted and flowed right out. Uh, got splurted out. I took my eyes off of it for just a moment. Um, and when I did that, well, when I took and I took my eyes off of it, boom. Lo and behold, look at that. That's as nasty as it can get there. Um, it had a good bit of that on this side. I was able to sand out most of it. There's still some little inclusions of that that you can see top and bottom here on that line. And those can still be coming out, but this won't be enough material for the project at hand. So I'll redo uh, something at a later date on that. This is, however, enough material for me to show you this next step uh, in the process of pattern development. So I'll go to the next clip, I'll be a little more zoomed out, and I'm going to do a little drawing for you real quick, illustration, so this way everybody kind of understands what we're doing and the principle of uh, doing this one type of patterning um, manipulation. So thanks everybody for watching this. Um, we'll try to turn it into a quick video, or as quick as I can go, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay everybody, here's my little drawing. Um, hopefully this will make sense to what we're going to do. Uh, this one form of pattern manipulation that you can do with Mokume, um, which is very interesting, and I believe you can do it with Damascus as well, um, it is essentially exposing these inner layers. Okay, And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take a countersink bit, and I am going to drill part of the way down into my billet as it sits and remove that material that you see like that. And what that's going to do and create for us now is it's going to create us this little notch. But what it's really doing is it's exposing these layers of the copper and nickel. It's exposing those layers. And what I mean by that is we're going to bring these up to the surface by hammering that out that direction and this out this direction. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a pretty interesting pattern. So by doing that, bear with me here, when you look at the piece of material 
when we do that in multiple spots, it's going to give it this ring-like effect. I hope you guys can see this. It's going to give it a ring-like effect when we do this in a pattern. And it's going to give it a really neat look. Um, I'm not quite sure what they call this pattern uh, and knife making and things of that nature. Um, I don't really care. It's just a neat look. Um, so that's one effect that you can do with with your pattern development because every one of these rings is essentially another layer of that stack of quarters or your, or your starting material. The other thing that you can do, we wipe that clean there, semi-clean, is that same billet that has layers, we're looking on the side of it here, it has layers in here, you can file across this way and create different file marks at different angles to the surface material itself and create a completely different pattern. So you can do a zigzag file work pattern, once again exposing these layers to that cut and then forging it out to where that becomes your surface material. And that will look a little something more like, draw this in here. That'll look a little more something like, let's see if I can draw this out very well. Um, it'll essentially, yeah, I think I'm doing this right. Yeah. Oh, I'm lost. I lost it. Anyways, it's going to give it this, uh, this cross-hatching effect. Something like that. Um, I screwed that up horribly. But anyways, hopefully you guys kind of get the ideal. It'll give it a bit of a, a weavy wobby uh, uh, cross-hatching effect on the surface. That may be or may not be what you want. The other option is, is you can leave it all natural. Just however it comes out, however the, the makame comes out, that's just how it is. Um, which is a neat fact. We just call that like a random pattern. Um, and that's fine for a lot of purposes. So that's it on my, pat my limited knowledge on pattern manipulation of uh, this material. Sky's the limit. There's literally hundreds of hundreds of thousands of different patterns and things you can do and build up of patterns and whatnot. Uh, just really use your own mind and your own creativity and how you like to go forward with that. Um, but today, we're going to work this billet down a little bit more and I'll show you a little bit more of the process. Keep in mind, I'll, this, this won't be going in probably to my final piece. Uh, as there's not enough material here to do what I need to do with it anyhow after I grind out all this bad stuff. But today we are going to take and forge this billet down into the next step of my process that I'm looking to do and we're going to do a little pattern manipulation on it. So uh, thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it and uh, we'll get going. Okay everyone, here we are at the drill press. We've got our countersink uh, chucked up here in the chuck. We are going to use my little X, Y axis vise that here that I got. And we're just going to start making a series of, of these type of countersink bore marks all the way across the piece. Uh, it's important to go ahead and put a backing piece. We're not trying to drill all the way through. We're just trying to take and disrupt the surface material. So I'll fire this up.
here we are right back at the workbench. As you can see, I've got my little pattern started there. I didn't make it all too con consistent. I'm not real worried about it for this video. Uh, if you want to make it perfect, you know, go for it. Um, but essentially, this is what I was shooting for, to get a bunch of these little dots drilled in here. Um, one thing to take and notate, um, these are not drilled holes. The uh, reason for that being is, is a drilled hole, the hole would collapse in on itself and close up. And then you just have a bunch of little tiny cold shuts. These are a bank, or they are a bevel. They look like that. Um, that is important, so this way when you forge this down, you can askew those layers out to where you can see them um, when it gets forged out. Uh, if you just drill a straight hole into a piece, so that's your piece and there's your straight hole, as soon as you start forging on this, these are going to collapse inwards. These walls are going to collapse inwards and create a pocket. And that's just going to be an inclusion later on, and we don't want that. So by drilling at a diagonal, having a nice chamfered hole like this, what we are doing is we're actually pushing the material away and exposing the grain that we're wanting to get at. So, first step in that is that's done. Um, I would also like to point out is you want to drill when it's not like that. You want to clean up your billet after each go, and before you get to forge welding any other pieces together, always soak them out in acetone or denatured alcohol to take and clean it of any oils that you may have got from your hands and stuff. Um, but for uh, these purposes and the forging practices here, we're going to go ahead and get this billet nice and hot up to a nice forging temperature. And then we're going to start spreading this out. And I'll show you guys how that looks. And this should take and help, it, you know, we'll get this all spread out. And then I'll clean it up and I'll show you what that come out to and what it looks like. And so this way you guys can get an idea of, uh, of what that pattern produces. And then uh, we'll be ready to move on to part four, which will be make, taking and patinaing it and etching. So we'll get to it. Okie doke, ladies and gents. I've got my material almost up to temperature. It's important to note you don't want to take and work this at a large welding heat anymore. You want to bring it up. The, the piece is already welded together very well. We just want to bring it up to a nice bright red or orangish color and forge it out from there. We're just going to hammer this out and try to compress the brown dots down a little bit without making cold shuts. We're just coming straight down and flat on those, those dots. We do not, do not want to try to move material together. Uh, that's what we don't want. But as you can see, those compress flat there on the other end, and you can kind of see a residue of those. So we'll take another heat on this. Another video I did the other day, or part two of the video series, you guys saw me use the hardy hammer on this. Um, once again, it's not necessary to have power assistance. You can do this by hand. It'll take a little longer, but you can still get a good amount of work done. So today I'm doing it for the guys who don't have uh, power assistance and showing you how it's done. So. Got this piece, it's getting hot again. It's almost up to temperature. There it is. We'll bring it out, we'll hold the other end now, and we'll work out it just the same. Okay, so now we got those dots forged back down in plane. We want to take care to try to dress this up nice and even. And now, we could leave it like this, and I could grind it, get it all cleaned up nice and flat, and then I could sand it off and I could show you all them dots. But what I need is I need to actually turn this into a bit of a bar. So I'm going to bring it out of the forge again, but up on edge, and I'm going to start working it 
and trying to squeeze this shape out into a bar shape. So I'll get another heat here. start to see how that that pattern start turning out there um, it gives it a bit of a wood grain effect uh, you'll have to wait until video number four in this series um, when I do the patina on it so this way I really get that pattern to pop um, these things are really difficult to get shot on camera and get the intricacies of that grain because there's so many layers in this thing but I will do my best um, to bring those out in the next thing when I go over the video of patinaing on this metal. So, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, thumbs down if you didn't. You know the drill. Um, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.